Good evening, uh, Don Corey here at Annika Rod and Fly. We're uh, going to wait a couple minutes. This is the Nor Norvice Facebook Live on Sunday evening, and uh, we're going to tie uh, a veiled egg pattern tonight as well as a black ghost streamer. Facebook Live on Sunday evening. We'll wait just a couple minutes for uh, folks to log in. If you're in, feel free to comment. We'll try to answer as many questions as we can. Uh, technical support is uh, my daughter Erica tonight, and uh, she'll be uh, monitoring the comments and uh, trying to get your questions answered. If you want to watch this video on uh, YouTube, should be up there, I believe, by Wednesday of this week, and. Uh, a, a hello from Vermont in Central Florida. Wow. Well, it was 41 degrees here in Brewer, Maine, so I'm assuming that Florida was a little bit, a uh, little bit warmer than that. The Norvice gang is coming back from uh, Steelhead Alley. Hopefully, they had from the pictures they had a great trip, and uh, they'll get back to the real world. What are we tying tonight? We're going to be tying a veiled egg pattern. Uh, I'll hold one up here. Um, we just started, uh, I just started tying this with uh, chenille and uh, the veiling, and it was fairly popular um, on the um, East Outlet a couple weeks ago for uh, landlocked salmon. So we're going to, that'll be the first fly we tie. Uh, we'll tie that beaded. Uh, if you wanted to, you could certainly leave the bead off. Missouri and North Idaho. Idaho. Welcome. <laughs> um, well, we're at the magic hour, so uh, we will get started. Uh, the hook that we're going to use on the uh, egg pattern, you could go all the way down to a six for like the Salmon River, six or eight. Um, this is a size 12 fire hole 317 it's a uh, bent shank a merger caddis style hook and we're also going to be using a fire hole tungsten bead in screaming red i usually size this down one size for uh, what it would normally call for we're tying tonight on a size 12 and this is a 332nd bead which should normally be sized for a 14 to 18. So I'm going to, uh, you could use any color thread. Um, I'm going to be using uh, a fluorescent fire orange because it's about the best, the closest color to the bead. It's uh, six aught. I'm going to lay a thread base down. And I usually uh, will take a little uh, Zappa Gap super glue, Z-Mint, and just put a drop on the thread wraps. We're going to be using uh, uh, chenille. This one is kind of a uh, flesh color. Uh, I guess we would call that fine or medium. Going to expose some of the fibers. And we're going to lash that down at the back. The super glue is probably not dried yet, so uh, it'll give a little uh, durability to the chenille as well. If you wanted the egg to be a little fluffier, or if you were tying it on a hook size bigger than a 12, then uh, you could probably use a uh, thicker chenille I think I got about three wraps on there 
Now the first one I'm going to tie, um, I'm going to use the bead underneath the veiling and it will act like a, a blood spot. So I'm going to uh, put a couple of half inches in. Cut my thread and push that bead back. And then I'm going to retie behind the eye. These are a straight eye hook. You could use uh, any caddis hook pattern, I caddis hook. Um, we're going to use a hairline product, Ice Dub. You could use uh, laser dub, um, magnum dub. I like this because it's uh, it's got a little more sparkle than laser dub. So I'm just going to open the package a little bit from the top. I'm not going to pull everything out. And I'm just going to pull a few fibers out. It doesn't take much. And I'm just going to kind of hand stack this. And I'm not worried about the length. I'm holding it on the top of the hook about a 45 degree angle. I'm going to go over the top. And then I'm going to pull the fibers back on the other side. And I'm using the thread to make a little, continue that blood spot. Put a half hitch on. I like the cement. You could use your terminal uh, glue of choice. I usually will put just a half an inch or so on the thread. And then before it dries, two or three two or three turn whip finish. And this is kind of a messy fly, but that's okay because as this gets wet in the water, that red bead will show up. Get a little straggler here underneath. So I'm just going to kind of wiggle that I stub around and I'm going to come in at the back and I'm going to cut it off just a little bit past the bend of the hook. And it doesn't have to be a straight cut. It can be at a little bit of an angle and you can do a little trim in if it's a little too thick. But as you can see, the bead underneath the veiling, um, when it gets wet, that'll definitely be seen. And you can shorten this up. A lot of the egg patterns that we see, the eggs that we see here in Maine, the fall for uh, spawning for brook trout and landlocked salmon, um, they're spawning this time of year, and they, they have a little cloudy um, adhere, adhesion that holds it in the stream bed. So uh, this has been a fairly good pattern. Uh, like I said uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, one of my customers caught. Uh, six over 18 and a half inches um, on an egg pattern like this. Got a question about the chenille. Sure. Could you use uh, this with the estesi? Estes? Estes. Chenille? Yes, especially in the bigger in the bigger sizes. Um, I use the 10 millimeter. If I was going to tie something small like this, gives you a lot more, uh, crit, a lot more flash than uh, the chenille does. But um, Absolutely. Um, I use 10 and 15 for the smaller. And if I get down into sixes and eights, I might even step up to a 30 millimeter and trim it down. So, uh, yes, Estaz, uh, typical colors, uh, white, this flesh color. Um, there's a gold that um, Estaz, uh, this is uh, 15 millimeter uh, gold color, which has been fairly successful, uh, even chartreuse. Uh, but I like the 
uh, the smaller bead in this fly, I mean, you, I've tied these without beads, and uh, the um, they tend to work really well under a striker indicator. So if you're in like four feet of water and you put your strike indicator up three feet from the fly and just let the fly dance along the bottom, uh, that works pretty well. In faster water, sometimes uh, the bead will just help you get down. That's why I like to use a little bit smaller bead so that it's not super heavy. Um, but um, it really depends on the water you're fishing. But this this guy bouncing along the bottom is uh, is a deadly uh, egg pattern. I'm going to tie uh, the next one, and I'm going to use the bead in the front uh, of the veiling, and you'll just get a look what that a look at what that looks like. And yes, I spent most of the afternoon putting these beads on the hook so they'd be ready. <laughs> For you that haven't tied with beads, uh, there's typically a big hole and a small hole. And we're going to put, you want to put the small hole over the uh, hook bar point first. Uh, these fire hole sticks are all um, we uh, all barbless and they have a little tiny uh, offset on the hook point, not much, but just a little tiny bit. We'll tie the next one uh, with a yellow chenille. This is uh, rayon chenille and it's not quite as fluffy as what we were using here. with the flesh colored one, but it really, it really doesn't matter a whole lot. And you don't have to use uh, Z-Man or Zappagap. You certainly could use uh, regular head cement. Just don't let that get under the bead until you're ready to position the bead. I know a lot of the egg patterns I've tied in the past, and I'm sure you have, uh, we used uh, egg wool or egg yarn, and uh, that works really well, but this tends to be a little easier uh, making your egg patterns. So this time, throw a half hitch on there, and I push the bead down to the eye, and I've left probably on this size hook about an eighth of an inch. And we're going to do the exact same thing with this uh, ice tub. Again, if you're joining us late, we're tying a veiled egg pattern. Uh, this is a size 12 uh, fire hole. Model 3, 317. And uh, we're, our veiling is an ice tub minnow belly from Hayline. And I'm just pulling a little bit out of the package. And don't be afraid to be sparse with this. It doesn't need to be very thick. And this time I'm going to lay this at a 45 right behind the bead. So the veiling is on the far side away from me. And then I'm going to pull what's left on my side of the hook. And in this one, using thread that uh, closely matches the color of the bead is helpful because then when you finish the, f the fly, it uh, thread blends right in with the bead so you don't even, you don't even see the, the thread head. Or I guess it wouldn't be a head behind the bead. And we're going to do the same thing. We can just push that veiling around. Sometimes it's easier to trim this out of the vise, but like I said, you can give it a, a little trim. And you can come in with uh, the 
drop of head cement, or you could use Zap again. So there's a couple of variations for that um, veiled egg pattern. Um, I'm sure Tim will tie up a few for uh, the uh, steelhead trip next year. And uh, I'll certainly send him a couple to, to try. But like I said, you don't have to spend a lot of time trimming this because basically it's, it's going to move. That uh, ice stub is going to move a lot in the water. So you really don't have to worry a whole lot about making it look pretty. So that's a couple of uh, veiled egg patterns, one with the bead uh, in front of the uh, veiling and one behind. Now, the next pattern that we're going to tie, um, it's a traditional main streamer. It's a black ghost marabou. Get this up a little close so you can see it. Uh, the, the original pattern uh, uh, was tied with uh, saddle hackles for the wing, but um, a lot of people have made a variation change and uh, used marabou for the wing. It's uh, very good. It has a lot of movement in the water. Um, in the larger sizes, twos and fours, um, we troll these in the spring and fall. And in fours and sixes, we will uh, tie them as a casting streamer. And uh, normally fished uh, floating line down and across at a 45 and let it swing across the current. And a lot of times they'll hit it as it's broadside in the stream. When it gets to the end of the drift and your line tightens, it will usually move up to the It'll come up in the water column, and if a trout or uh, landlocked salmon is following that, when it turns the corner and starts coming up, a lot of times that's when you'll get the take. A uh, very popular pattern down on Grand Lake Stream, as well as up on the east outlet out of uh, Moosehead Lake. Uh, this particular fly, we're going to tie on a partridge CS-15 hook. Yeah, this is a size four. Um, you could cast this, but it might be a little bit of a load. Normally, you'd be trolling this. I'm tying it on this size hook, so it's a little easier to see. I'm tying with the shank jaws. Uh, these are my favorite by far. Uh, they hold the hook right where I want it, especially I tie a lot of streamers. And I like to have that uh, hook shank just a little bit above the jaws themselves. And um, this fly, uh, this hook has a loop return eye that's tapered. So it's very nice to uh, create a head on the fly. And it's a nice little platform to tie the wing on with. This particular pattern, we're going to use uh, just a few uh, materials. Obviously, besides the hook, we're going to use uh, schlappen, yellow schlappen for the tail and for the throat. We're going to use uh, size 12 uh, mylar tinsel, gold and silver, gold on one side, silver on the other. We're going to uh, want to see the silver. And we're going to use uh, unifloss black for the body and white marabou for the wing. Could you grab me a white mirror off the wall up there? All right, so we're gonna start with the black six aught thread. This is uh, Semper Fly Classic. Nope, to your left. All right, so I've tied in uh, right behind the loop, right here in the, and this is where the Norvice tying system shines. Um, didn't get to do that much in the egg pattern because we didn't have that many wraps of anything, but uh, for streamers and 
particularly uh, bodies. The Norway system is incredible. So we're going to take the Schlappen. Schlappen is a, uh, it's a saddle hackle, but it's very webby. If you look at the fibers are uh, very webby, almost out to the tip. And they tend to have a little bit more movement in the water. So I'm going to hold this feather and preen maybe three-eighths of an inch, quarter to three-eighths of an inch of fibers away from the stem. I'm going to grab those with my finger. And I'm going to pull the stem away from my hand. And I end up with a little bunch. There's no stacking or anything involved. We just have a little bunch of yellow fibers. Now I want this tail to be about the gap of the hook. So I'm going to measure that like this from the bend to the point. And then I'm going to hold it out the back. And I'm going to hold that with my left. And I'm just going to throw a loose wrap over the top. And put three or four wraps of thread on. If you only put two or three wraps of thread, you can grab this and pull it if it's too long, or you can pull it back if it's too short. Um, I'm not sure that it's totally uh, important that it's an eighth of an inch one way or the other. It's just a flash of yellow at the back. Now, we want to be aware because we're going to be tying uh, floss. We're going to be tying a floss body on this, so we want to make sure that when we bind down the tail, we're not leaving a bump. Uh, it's nice to have a nice flat body for our floss, and I'll show you how we're going to do that. So I'm going to bind this down side-by-side -side wraps, and then I'm going to come in, and I'm going to hold that up at a fairly steep laid down angle to the hook and I'm going to come in and I'm going to cut that so it's leaving it at a little bit of an angle so now we're going to move our thread back to the back to the back of the loop we're going to grab a piece of tinsel Now, if we were tying by the book, this would want to have, uh, we're going to use the tinsel for a rib, and we want to have five wraps of tinsel. But on a normal casting stream of that hook, that would be fine. But this is a 10x long hook, so we're going to have a few more than five. So I'm going to tie that in right behind the loop, and I'm going to hold it. I put the silver side of the tinsel against the shank. And I'm going to bind that. As I work down, I'm going to put that tinsel on the bottom of the hook. And I'll show you why that's important when we get down here. And the point is nobody's friend, so be careful as you wrap down. I've got some uh, fantastic, I think, Tim is going to start marketing these. These are uh, retention clips. They may look like a hair clip, but they're actually a Norvice uh, retention clip. That holds that tinsel out of the way because I'm going to wrap the floss body, and I don't want that tinsel to be jumping all around um, the vice jaws. All right. So now I've got um, black uni floss loaded in my bobbin. And that's what we're going to use for the body. So I'm going to bring my thread back up to the front and throw a couple of half inches on.
and then I'm going to take my uni floss. Uh, used to be you could only get floss four strands. Well, when uni started coming out with the single strand, it was awesome because you can either use one strand, two, three, four, six, whatever you want. So uh, this will allow me to lay down a nice flat body. And if I get to the back where my yellow schlappen was tied off and I find that my body is a little bit thinner here than it is over the feathers, I'll run a layer of floss back to the front and then come down so that I get a nice taper all the way down. Now, I've tied this in at the front. I'm back about an eye right now behind the eye. So now I'm going to take this and I want to lay this fairly close together. I went a little bit too far. All I got to do is rotate it back a little bit. And right now, if I take this and go back up on top of where the yellow's tied in, it's going to be thicker. So I'm going to make a quick, I'm going to make a quick run, traveling wraps back to the front. And then I'm going to come down again. The uni floss only requires one wrap around the uh, leg of the bobbin. Now you can see I've got a fairly level body by putting that little bit extra. Now I'm going to wrap this uni. And if you wanted to, I mean, you could wrap this by hand, but I don't know why you would. So now I'm going to throw a couple of half hitches on. You certainly could if you wanted to put a drop of head cement on there. I'm never opposed to that. And then I'm going to cut my floss. And then I'm going to go back to my black 6 aught. Now, I'm going to go to my thread post after I put a half hitch on. And I'm going to take my tinsel. And because I bound that tinsel down to the bottom, when I bring it up to wind this towards the front, it's going to be silver and it's coming out from the bottom. It has a makes it a little bit cleaner at the back end. So I'm going to hold this tinsel at probably a 45 degree angle to the hook shank. That's not too bad. Um, I like to space that out so that I've got approximately two times the color of the floss for every width of the tinsel. And I pretty much maintained that. This is a kind of a scaly look to the fly. Um, if I didn't like that, wow. And I can space it out more if I wanted to. But the thing you've got to remember is as you're spinning the vise and that's winding up, you've got to keep moving your, I say your right hand if you're right-handed, you've got to keep moving that up because if you don't, it will just kind of get closer together and closer together. You've got to maintain that angle that you did when you started. Kind of like the looks of that. Now, if you don't bind this down fairly well, this tinsel will unravel like a spring. Now, at this point, I'm going to drop a little bit of zap on here. 
just a touch right on the end of the tinsel. And I'm going to just touch it with my fingers, blow on it a little bit, and that usually will cure that very quickly. Now we're going to work on the throat. And the throat on this fly is going to be yellow schlappen. So we're going to rotate the vise over. Um, on a lot of vices, uh, you might have to take the hook out and turn it over with an oil vise where it locks every 90 degrees. You just bang that 180 degrees. Uh, it's belly up. We're going to do the same thing that we did for the tail. We're going to pull some fibers perpendicular off the stem. I'm going to grab it with my left hand and pull with my right. Gives me a little tuft. Now, when I tie this in, I like to trim it to length because it's kind of hard sometimes to grab those little tips and pull it out. So I'll just lay this in. And I guess if we were going to measure that, um, you'd want to be a little bit longer than the gap of the hook. And now, now another variation that folks will do with this fly is uh, they will put crystal flash. Um, and you certainly could do that. If you're going to use a little couple strands of crystal flash, don't overdo it. Tie them in now and just lay them down on top of the body. Uh, crystal flash is like bacon. Um, it doesn't matter what you put it on. It makes it better. So, uh, and people say, well, the original patent didn't call for that. Well, if they had crystal flash back when Herb Welch designed this fly, he probably would have used it. So we want the wing. We need a fairly long feather because we want the wing to uh, go all the way to the back. And believe me, all marabou is not created equal. A lot of times you'll have to take two feathers and lay them on top of each other. Here's a fairly long one. Now, I would, 25 years ago, um, I would be dragging this through my mouth to uh, contain it a little bit and to put it on top of the hook shank and tie it in. Um, when you wet these fibers, they lay down nicely, they tie in easily, and when they dry, they get fluffy again. Um, obviously, that's not what we recommend. Um, I usually have a sponge or a little uh, cup of water that I can dip the feather in or dip my fingers in and kind of tame those down just a little bit. And my able-bodied assistant is going to wet my fingers enough to you can see how nice that lays down so when we get ready to tie this in again I like to tie this in cut to length so I don't have to go in and cut it So I'm going to lay this on the top. Now I'm going to bring my thread back to what I would call the back of the head. So I don't want to be up near the eye. I want to be back just a little bit so that when I tie this down and build my head, it's going to taper down to the eye. I'm going to hold this on maybe a little bit on my side of the hook.
and I'm binding back towards my fingers and then back towards the eye. Ideally, we want to have a nice taper. I like to use a little bit thinner thread. You certainly could use like a UTC 210, UTC 140, which is a little bit thicker than in this. Um, you certainly could use those, um, but it builds up, especially with streamers, builds up a huge head quickly. So I'd rather build it up with more wraps of thread. So as you can see, I'm working from the back of the head tapered down to the eye. I've got a question for you. Sure. Can this fly be tied as a tandem fly or is it too big? It is definitely. If you've got the marabou to cover it, you certainly can tie it as a tandem. Um, that's why the uh, saddle hackles are a little more forgiving when it comes time to uh, tie a tandem. But you certainly can tie it with, uh, with marabou as long as when I'm tying tandems, I'm usually using two and a quarter inches of uh, wire to tie the two hooks together. Um, and the two and a quarter inch wire between the two hooks will give me about the same length as this 10X long. So if I've got a marabou feather that will cover this fly, that marabou feather would work on a tandem streamer as well. Um, excellent trolling fly tandem. So you get a couple options here. We could use um, Solares uh, bone dry for the uh, for the head of this fly. Um, could use it black. You could we could use. Uh, the clear. Um, I tend to uh, recommend people to buy the clear because um, I think there's a little light down there, a little black, like a little flashlight. And I'll hold on just a second. I've got one. There it is. The solar is torch. I'm going to throw a couple of half hitches on here. If you haven't found UV resin yet, um, you're missing the boat. That stuff is, it's really made a big difference in a lot of flies that we tie. One of them is that we can put this nice glossy finish on the head of this fly and cure it and be done with it. We can put it in our fly box and go from there and can you get these hooks at your shop pardon can you get these hooks at your shop? yes you can um the uh partridge hooks are actually out of production um the cs15s they discontinued a year or so ago but they make for an awesome streamer fly and this was uh, was labeled properly, but uh, the label has come off. And so we can put that on there, that bone dry, and we just give it a little whirl. The Solaris torch dries that in probably six or eight seconds. Um, a lot of times, this makes it look like the eye of a bait fish, a smelt, or a uh, that's what it's imitating. So that nice little shiny head may be the pupil of the eye. Who knows? But we'll do a couple coats. You could use the uh, thin hard. I'd prefer two coats of the bone dry. I think the bone dry is uh, much nicer to work with, especially for heads of flies. I mean, it doesn't build up very fast, but it does make for a fantastic. Put a black screen. Pardon? We got a black screen. Back screen? Black screen. So maybe switch to your other camera right there. Are we back? No. Still live? 
but just no. Oh, there we go. Got you right there. Yep. How's that? Perfect. Sorry about that. I said to break away for just a second. So that's the uh, the Black Ghost. I mean, it's a fantastic pattern. Uh, been around for a lot of years. Uh, trolling, like I said, in the spring. Here in Maine, we will troll at Ice Out, uh, right after Ice Out, with a uh, floating fly line, 20-foot monofilament leader. Um, the, the smelts are typically up at the surface. The lake trout. Landlocked salmon, brook trout will be up there feeding, especially for the first week or two after ice out. And then as the water warms up, the thermocline goes down a little bit. They're usually, they move down with it. But um, trolling flies uh, like this guy are uh, very popular uh, here in Maine and other New England states. Um, so those are the two... Uh, Different patterns that we're tying tonight, they're really not related to another. I guess you could use that egg dropper off this this uh, streamer, but uh, that would be a first for me for sure. If you have any questions uh, about these flies, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments below, and uh, I'll try to get back to you uh, if you have any questions, uh, comments. If you like the video, uh, next week, I'm not sure who's going to be tying, but I'm sure some will be behind the vice, so uh, be sure to tune in uh, next Sunday night, 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time at uh, Norvice uh, Facebook page. And like I said, this will be available on YouTube by uh, midweek. So uh, feel free to, if you didn't see the whole thing today, uh, drop over and uh, have a look there. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, fish more and tie more often. Have a good evening.